if I want to be rich and wealthy and I want to actually make something more of myself, that's where I want to become more of the investor. But then here was the issue and that I faced or the challenge is one, I didn't have the money. I didn't have the credit. I actually owed the bank money, just not being financially smart as a, a college kid. But I, I started to adapt the growth mindset that, okay, those are challenges, but how do you solve them now? Thank you for joining us again today on the Real Estate Syndication Show. I am your host, Whitney Sewell. I hope that you have liked and subscribed to the show so you know exactly what content we're putting out that can help you to increase your your business and to grow personally and professionally. That's my goal today with our guest who he heard gunshots as a child and was fearing, I mean, for his life, fearful, to now today a successful real estate investor with a large portfolio. We're going to go through many topics with this guest, Sterling White. He's a multifamily investor in the Midwest and manager of over 10 million in capital across 500 units deployed over 16 million in assets under management in his portfolio. He's been a bigger pockets contributor since 2014 with over 200 posts and has been featured on Big Pockets, like Bigger Pockets and Grant Cardone, Jake and Gino, Joe Fairless, many of those that, that you have heard of. Sterling White goes through many things today, and, and we we're through this series that we do together, we're going to get a little deeper into his background than I think he even expected. But I think there's so many people that can relate potentially to his background, and I want them to hear his just amazing story of what, what happened and how he, how he came out of that. Uh, and But, man, some actionable steps that he took to get to that first deal that were crucial. Uh, that I know is going to be so beneficial for for many of you. And then over the next few days, we're going to go into many details around finding deals, single family versus multifamily, and then even some creative financing that I know is going to help you to get some deals done. Even if you're a bigger operator, you're going to learn a lot. Even if you are a passive investor, you're going to learn a lot from these stories and from his experience. I mean, he had 150 single family homes, I mean, from nothing. Right, no credit, no money to 150 single family homes and pivoting to a successful multifamily portfolio. I know you're going to learn a lot from Sterling today. Sterling, welcome back to the show. It's been too long. Yeah, super excited about being on here. And all I have to say for everyone is go ahead, get your popcorn ready. So we're going to take you along for a journey. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm grateful to have you on. And I just uh, respect the journey that you've taken and how much you have pursued. I mean, just the passion for real estate and how you're even helping so many people and just educating through your bigger pockets contributions and all those things and the portfolio you've built. And so looking forward to diving into it with you today. So but Sterling, get us started. Let's hear about how you got in, into real estate a little bit. I want to dive into that and some other actionable steps that you took to get there. I know there's many people that are going to relate to that. And then you know, in later segments, we're going to dive deeper into some specific topics that I know you are an expert in. But first, let's hear about, man, how did you make this happen? Let's go back a little bit, back a little yeah. bit of time. So it comes down to, I don't want to give too much of the, the story because I have been uh, featured uh, previously, but just a spark note version, or I believe it's the cliff note version for everyone is uh, born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana and in the, the parts of town. You, when you're driving through those neighborhoods, you would lock your doors and roll up your windows and single mother, fraternal twin brother. And I remember every other day had to get down on the ground during the nighttime because it sounded as if fireworks were outside, but it was actually gunshots. And so just I was in the situation to didn't even know if I was going to make it past the age of 18 because I almost lost my life several times just being in that environment. But Luckily, ended up making it out. And this is where I really came into entrepreneurship because I had to figure out a way to earn money in the legal sense, because there was tons of illegal activity that was going on around me, but didn't take that path. So first started selling Kool-Aid, then Pokemon cards. And then fast forward, how I got into to real estate was I was a laborer on the construction side. And that's when I ended up falling in love with it. But I knew I didn't. That's not where I wanted to be. And so I started investing. And started buying a single family, started and scaled to 150. And then at that point in time, it was like, it was took a step back and said, this is a nightmare because it was doing all the self-managing and then started buying a multifamily and scaled to about 500 units, about three and a half, uh, four years. So that's where I'm at today and been selling over the years just due to the climate that we've been in. Man, well, what an amazing story. I'm so thankful that you 
kind of made it out of that, right? And uh, I know this doesn't seem like it has anything to do with the real estate. And you tell me if, if I shouldn't ask you this, but I want to ask you because I, man, I wonder about this and even think about so many people that are like caught in that environment, right? You know, you're living in an area as a child where, I mean, you're hearing gunshots and or near death at times. And I mean, I just can't even fathom, you know, as a child. Can you share how you came out of that? I mean, it's often it seems like folks are stuck in that, right? Like they're stuck, right? Man, I just hate it, right? What was that yeah. thing? Maybe if you're okay with sharing yeah. that helped you to, man, see this thing that you could create, you know, that's outside of that. Yeah. So there was, I don't know if there's some higher being or whatever it is that God hired myself or some angel that's looking over me. Cause I was always a good kid. It was just the people that I had surrounded me around me. But one of the things that my mother ended up doing, which was an absolute really shifted the trajectory of my life was she ended up moving us out of the inner city. And it was the east side of Indianapolis to more of the suburbs. We were still in lower income housing, but the schooling was entirely different and the people around me was entirely different. So that's where it really started. And the thing is, and this is really shows you the fork in the road, because I have a twin brother. We're fraternal. Some people say he's as dark as Wesley Snipes. I don't think so. But is there was a fork in the road because he went back to that environment that we formerly were in and he ended up taking a different path in life and is actually facing hard time due to that. So that's one thing I want to share with people is it really does come down to the people you surround yourself with. And I'm a, a case study of that, having a twin brother and the same age and everything. And we took two different paths just due to that. Wow. Wow. Well, I appreciate you sharing that and and just being so transparent about that. I just think there's probably more then you'll know that are listening that can relate, right? And they can hear your story. And hopefully it's encouraging to them if they're in that situation, or maybe they are living there and they're a parent, or maybe they have friends that are in that situation as well. Maybe they could even point them to your story, you know, and to you that, man, what a great role model you've become for those children, right? That are in those situations. So, so grateful. So, but then you started selling what Pokemon cards and lemonade. And then all of a sudden you're buying real estate. Now, wait a minute that, you know, how long did that take? How did you figure out from Pokemon cards to that real estate? Hey, I could go build this thing in real estate. So the Pokemon cards and all that was in, I'd say, middle school and towards the end of elementary middle school. So I had to figure out a way to earn money because I wanted the things at that time, the materialistic things that really didn't matter. So I had to figure out a way to earn money. So that's when I got my foot in the door into selling that. And then that bridge between getting into real estate was I was in college on, what is it, human biology degree, had no clue why I was actually doing that. At that time, I believe that was good actually in biology, but that was because when I was in high school, the person sitting next to me was actually good in biology. So they actually helped me in a way, wink, wink. And so during the summertime, my roommate's dad owned a construction company and saw that I had some free time during the summers. And that's when I ended up getting my foot in the door there. And then I read the book, which very common book people are familiar with, which is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So I came across that four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. And then also I started listening to Earl Nightingale. But from the, the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it got that, okay, well, I was exchanging my time for money. It's not very scalable doing that. And to become rich and wealthy is it's very difficult to do that by being a construction worker, nothing against construction workers, but that's where you actually, the investing is where you want to be. And then that's when I started shifting to actually now buying the properties instead of actually swinging the hammer. Wow. So you started doing some self-education, right? Uh, self-educating and you realized, hey, there, there may be a, a better path and figured out real estate is probably it, at least on the investing side, right? Uh, you figured out you need to be in that space. And so anything else had to happen during that time? I mean, like I was just thinking about, you know, the childhood you came out of. Now you're in college, you're pursuing these things. Just the mindset to being able to still pursue business. It's interesting too, even in middle school, it's like, you know, hard times, right? Build tough men right, and women, right? And, you know, you had to figure out a way to earn some money, even in middle school. And you figured out a way, right? I mean, you were having to think that way. You were made to think that way. And now, you know, as you get older, you're still able to think that way, just at, even at a bigger scale, which has been, I'm sure, a very beneficial. But and so you're in college. You aren't, Go ahead. And I would say one of the things growing up in that environment that was the unfortunate, which is two sides of the coin, but I would say 
I had to rewire and remove a lot of garbage, for lack of better words, from the limiting beliefs as an example. And this may sound like a dumb a belief, but this is when I had that. Rich people, in order, rich and wealthy people, in order to get that way, they had to do unethical things. And just imagine being a kid and you're wanting to be that and you're asking yourself as well, I'm an ethical person. I'm a good kid. I can never become rich and wealthy. So I had that belief. And also when it comes to money, I remember my mother driving around to all these different gas stations to save five cents per gallon. So it's just those type of thoughts and beliefs that were ground into me. And then when I started doing the self-education, the self-improvement, the Zig Ziglar's, the Tony Robbins, the Earl Nightingale's, the Norman Vincent Peale's, I had to remove a lot of that and then start putting the more empowering beliefs on top of that. So that was another pivotal moment that happened for me. And that all started where that's a whole nother story and stuff. But in essence, is I was at a college party and this was in my early 20s. And I ended up drifting away from the crowd, away from everyone. And there was this question that came down to me, Whitney, that says, Sterling, is this what you want to do with your life? And I said, no. And then ever since then, that's when I started the self-improvement. I cut off all my friends because they were not going where I wanted to go. Great people. Thirdly, is I cut out the news. Huge. Wow. That question. Is this what you want to do with your life? I mean, uh, like if, if all of us as, as teenagers or late teens, for sure, if we could just ask ourselves that question, right? Think through that a yep. little bit. That could be helpful. What about the mindset then at this time to jump into real estate? You know, I was thinking about, man, you've accomplished a lot even to probably, you know, make it to college to be pursuing that, right? You know, from the childhood you had, and you've come out of that, that mindset already, right? And probably many limiting beliefs to be where you're at then. Well, what about then saying, you know what, I know real estate can do this thing that I'm wanting to do or can build the wealth that I can see what happened then mentally to say, you know what, maybe this is not for me. Or did you finish college as well? No, I did not. I was actually a super senior. So I was going into my fifth year and had, I believe I have 12 or 14 credit hours. So I could go back and finish those, but is college just was not for me. And I remember there was one class that it was very warm temperature and I would go in there and I would always just fall asleep. I was just not engaged. And I remember at one point the teacher said, well, Sterling, if you come in here again and you go to sleep, is I'm going to have to remove you from the class. I drank all these Red Bulls and did everything before the class, went into the class and then fell asleep again. So it was just not for me on that. And so at that time is I was shifting to, okay, what is next from this? Because I don't enjoy this. And at that same time is that's when I ended up starting on the construction as a laborer. And I had fell in love with real estate from seeing, okay, this is originally how the project is. And then seeing the after effects and actually help building that. And then simultaneously, I was just reading books and I had that pivotal moment, the story at the college party. So it was really just a sum total of multiple things that happened and then read those books and saw, okay, well, if I want to be rich and wealthy and I want to actually make something more of myself, that's where I want to become more of the investor. But then here was the issue and that I faced or the challenge is one, I didn't have the money. I didn't have the credit. I actually owed the bank money, just not being financially smart as a, a college kid. But I, I started to adapt the growth mindset that, okay, those are challenges, but how do you solve them now? Love that. I try to teach my boys that all the time. You know, it's like, let's not focus on what you think you don't know, right? Let's focus on what you do know and how to figure out the rest, right? How do we move forward? But it is a mindset. It is it's a different way of thinking, right? And I think it's almost a freeing thing, right? And you're not crippled by this belief that you don't know. And so you just don't do anything, right? Yeah, there's the growth mindset. And there's the, let's say the victim mindset, which most unfortunately do have is, well, it's me. I'm going to blame that over there. I could easily blame the environment that I came from. And hey, there's no way I'm supposed to make something of myself. I can't get into real estate because I grew up in this setting and my dad wasn't around all these different excuses. But I decided to look at the flip side. And Earl Nightingale talks about this is there's actually two individuals, both didn't have the best of environments. And there's two brothers as an example. And one ended up using that as a story that said, okay, I'm actually going to make something of myself because I grew up in this. And the other use it as a crutch and an excuse that same. So that just goes to show you the different belief systems and mindsets from the same exact circumstance. What is that example again? Or what did you call that? So maybe the listeners can look it up or do you know? 
I do not remember. It was just a random recording okay. when okay. Earl Nigo was just talking. Yeah. Okay. No, that's awesome. What a great example, though. Is it the words that come out of our mouth are so important, right? You know, it shows what we believe and and we almost convince ourselves of it, whether it's true or not, you know? All right. So, you know, you didn't have any money. You didn't have any credit. You've dropped out of college. And even from the childhood you have, I would imagine for most, this would be such a kick in the face, right? I mean, it would be like such a downtime, discouraged, you know, I, I failed, I didn't make it, whatever. That maybe that happened a little bit. I don't know. Either way, you didn't stay there, even if it did. I mean, you you took actionable steps. And I wonder, like, no credit, no money. You knew real estate was a potential path for you. Man, but how do you get started? No credit, no money. What happened next for you to be able to start making it happen? So I ended up putting the pieces of the puzzle together. So I knew I didn't have it. And it's either I can figure out a way to build it myself or find someone where I can offer value in exchange for those weaknesses that I have and I lack. And so it just happened to be at the CrossFit gym that I was working out at and training for a world record. That's another story in itself, but uh, is that I ended up forming a relationship with this individual. Never thought that they would end up being my mentor. And I approached him one day and said, well, this was after we had really established our relationship and asked him out the subway, had no idea how I was actually going to pay for the subway. Luckily, they ended up doing it. And I said, how can I be of value to you and your business? And I could see they were on the fence with when I had asked that. And I said, here's a kicker. You don't have to pay me anything. And from that is I started helping him in his business and just with he was more of an older operator. So I was able to put his units and make them more digital for being able to, to rent. So online posting on truly a hot pads, et cetera. And then he owned multifamily. But interesting enough, he wanted to diversify into single family, which normally is the other way, single family, and multifamily. But is he didn't have the time to find the deals, but he had the cash. I didn't have the cash, but I had the time. And then that was the perfect match in that case. Incredible. So what happened next? So did you help him long term? Did you start working for him? Was that a paid position ever? Uh, or partnership, or was it just, you know, kind of infrequent? What did that look like? So it was on a a day-to-day basis. And how I was paid was I just stayed in one of his apartment units that he had. So I didn't have to pay any rent. So that was my competition in a way. And so this was over the course of, I would say, six to eight months of doing that, working within his business. And then that's when I ended up finding that very first single family house, which was just sent over from Someone I met at a networking event, sent it over to Will, and which he was my uh, mentor, so sent it over to him. And then the numbers made sense. He funded the purchase price as well as the rehab. And I got thrown into the fire. All right, so I'm going to go figure everything else out. So that's how I was able to get my foot in the door. Wow. Incredible. The relationship that you were able to build there that got you started, right? I mean, he funded it. He helped. I mean, he obviously like saw a desire in you. He saw some talent. He saw... You know, maybe he didn't have the talent yet, but he knew you you wanted it, right? I think, you know, he probably saw that, hey, you were willing to put the time in. And man, I'm thankful that he noticed that and invested in you, right? I just hope that I notice those people as well, right? You know, after getting started in this space, it's not easy, right? And I hope that, man, are my eyes open to see other guys and gals like Sterling or myself that, man, I also needed some help, right? No money, no credit, you know, it's like hard to get started. But this was the thing, too, is that you could really see, and I don't remember who provided this example, is that when you're at the gym, as an example, you can tell the people that have that grit and just put in the work. And I was one of those people that was the same, the same way. So he saw that, I'm sure. And then also, I was always that oddball that was actually at the gym, and I would sit in the corner, I would read a book. So I'm sure he ended up picking up on those things and saying, okay, I don't know what it is, but I, and when I had approached him with that, he said, well, I've seen you around the gym. We already, we, several times we went to the library together. He was also a uh, avid listener to Earl Nightingale. So we had all these things in common. So that also helps with him having that trust and saying that, okay, I'm going to go ahead and take a risk on this individual. Cause one, we've already formed a relationship. And then also I've seen your work ethic and then your, I wouldn't say praise, but others have had nothing but good things to say about you as well. I'm so glad you brought that up. It's like, man, the way you were performing in the gym, maybe I didn't even talk to him yet, but he sees you, right? You see each other every day. You, he sees your commitment 
to that and your work ethic in the gym. I think that's such a great or a valid point. So it almost goes back to that. How you do anything is how you do everything. I don't know if I agree with that 100%, but man, most of the time it's <laughs> for that big part of that. I mean, it's so true, right? Just your mentality, your diligence about most things. So Yeah. And these things take time. And that's what I want to share with people. They think that, oh, that mentorship and he just approached them first day, asked them, and then it all ended up working out. No, that wasn't the case. It was over months. And I never even anticipated that being the case. But it just happened to be, and this goes into, I don't want to go into Fugazi, Waha, all that, but uh, is I ended up putting it out there that, hey, I want to be in real estate, but I have these weaknesses and these gaps. And somehow that my brain or the world ended up conspiring to help me put the pieces of the puzzle together. And it just so happened to be that that person was there at the gym that I was working out at. And then we ended up forming that uh, relationship. So, but this was over the course of months. Than just not making it about, okay, how can I just get value from this person? I actually approach, hey, give, 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 give. Awesome if I get something in return, but that's not how I want this to start right from the beginning because he had a lot more leverage. Wow. Sterling, an amazing story. I'm so thankful that we got to dive into that a little bit uh, because I just think it's so encouraging to so many. Man, what you came from to finding that mentor to, I mean, just the mindset shift to, going and making it happen and not just being so focused on the past, right? And letting that pull you down, man, you charged forward. And I'm so grateful for that example for myself and for many others as well. So I want the listeners to know, hey, stick around. Sterling and I, I mean, are going to talk about finding deals next and how he started building this portfolio that he has now. 500 units or more, 16 million in assets. Incredible. After starting with that single family home, right? We're going to jump into that in just a moment. Thank you for being a loyal listener of the show. Please subscribe and share it with your friends. We want to help you become the passive investor you've always wanted to become, but also the operator you've always wanted to become. We want to be the number one resource for your real estate investing journey. But go to lifebridgecapital.com where you can start investing in real estate today.